Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Refine Horizons, and I'm recording this on Friday, so happy Friday. What I want to do in this video is show you how <clears throat> we check some of the information in a joiner deeds when we're resolving a boundary on a on a survey. So, uh, and there's there's two different kinds of information that you need to check when you're when you're checking your joiners. You check for the uh, course, what I call corresponding controlling calls or matching controlling calls, and then you also check to see how your uh, if there's if there's been surveys done on the uh, neighbor's property, the adjoiner's property. You, you check for uh, gaps and overlaps in the record measurements or the historical measurements. So it's okay if you don't understand what I just said because I'm going to teach you. And in this video, uh, well, it's probably going to be a couple videos. I'm going to teach you to do the first part of that. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to check for corresponding controlling calls on each line of the of the subject parcel. So we're going to check the adjoiner deeds versus what's in our subject parcel deed. And then in another video, I'll I'll show you guys how to check for gaps and overlaps in measurements. And I'm going to try and keep this fairly simple. This is a, a, a somewhat more advanced task for the boundary surveyor because you have to be able to uh, read and interpret land descriptions and read and interpret survey maps. But uh, I, wanted, I wanted to make an attempt to at least walk you guys through this. Uh, even if you're not uh, an experienced boundary surveyor, it'll be a good introduction to the topic. And uh, I also hope this video will uh, help my friend and partner, Danny, uh, understand uh, how to do this. So... <clears throat> We're gonna we're gonna walk through this on a real life parcel. So I'm gonna go into my job here. Uh, this is a job we did up in Roseville, and uh, I'm gonna go into the boundary folder. And in the boundary folder, I've made this uh, little sketch uh, called the joiners. So I'm gonna open that. I'm gonna actually open up my other PDF viewer. And we're just gonna annotate our adjoiner information here and then uh, we'll use this sketch later when we go to do our boundary survey report and boundary survey report and I hope to actually do that with you guys in another video so okay so here's the the first step in this process that we're going to do in in this set of videos the first step is you go through your subject parcel deed and you identify if each segment has a controlling call, and if so, what that controlling call is. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up our deed for our subject parcel. So if you go into deeds, uh, vesting, here's my deed for my parcel. Okay, so I will pull that up. And then we want to find the actual land description, which is right here. Okay, so it's parcel 1 on this parcel map in book 32. Uh, page seven. So this is what surveyors call lot and block description. It's uh, parcel per parcel as defined on a subdivision map. Okay, so what what that means is this actual deed isn't going to have controlling calls. Okay, because we're a lot and block description. What I have to do is I have to go look at the subdivision map, which I have because we worked on this boundary survey. So let's go look at the subdivision map. So here's our parcel map, thirty-two seven. Okay. And here's our parcel. And so what we want to do is we want to see um, how this surveyor has identified the controlling calls on any of these lines for our parcel. So we're parcel 1 here. Okay, this is us, parcel 1. This is a two-parcel parcel map. Now, the other thing that you want to do uh, when you're going through this exercise is if, if, if the surveyor tells you what parcel he subdivided, and gives you the deed reference, then it's good to go and, and check what I call that's the ancestor deed. Okay, and a lot of times surveyors don't do that on subdivision maps, which is horrible, should be illegal. Uh, but this guy actually did, and I had to dig around a little bit for it. Uh, I like to show it right here, you know, or, or somewhere with a note on the parent parcel line. But he he actually puts it down here in a note, which is okay. So he says source of meets and bounds is this deed three seven six five O R one O eight. Okay, which is a little bit uh, cryptic, but what that means is that's the deed that had the land description for the parcel that he subdivided here into parcel 1 and parcel 2. 
Okay, but I'm not going to look at that yet. Uh, we'll, we'll do that in another video. So we want to just go through this map and see if we can figure out the calls for each line. Now, this south line is easy because he created this line on this map. Okay, so these two monuments that he set here on this new line are what we call original controlling monuments. I talk about that in some other videos. Okay, because he created this line. And so uh, because he didn't note on this map that this line was supposed to follow some kind of physical feature, um, this is this is a new line is defined on this map. It really doesn't have a, a controlling call. So let's go ahead and annotate that on our sketch. So that's this line here. Okay, this is parcel one, this is parcel two. So I'm just going to make a note there. And I'm going to say south line of the... I'm gonna, actually, the way I'm going to annotate this, I'm going to say subject parcel south line uh, created by controlling subdivision map no other controlling call. Okay, so that's just a note for me. Okay, so we did the south line first because it was easy. Okay, but generally I like to start in my north northwest corner and move clockwise, so let's start with this line here. Okay, now this is a little bit tricky because he doesn't directly call it out, but um, if you read closely, this is the north quarter corner of section 3, and uh, this is actually um, the quarter quarter section corner between section 3 and 10, and that if that looks funny, it is funny. I am on the uh, north range, uh, the north tier of sections, not only in the township, but this is a standard parallel, so all the slops being thrown up for four townships is being thrown up on this line, and so this section is only half as tall as it would normally be, and uh, if you're not an expert on public land surveys, don't worry. Uh, the, the, the key thing is We've got a, a quarter corner here and a quarter corner here, which makes this the north-south one-quarter section line of section 3. Okay, now he doesn't note that on the map. It'd be nice if he did. It'd be nice to have a little call out. That would make your job easy, but sometimes you're going to have to do a little, uh, a little sleuthing, a little digging around, a little interpretation, because um, surveyors uh, don't always do a great job on their boundary maps. So he doesn't directly call it out, but this is that north-south one-quarter section line of three and this is the north south one quarter section line of section ten so let's go ahead and annotate that <clears throat> so this is on the subject parcel again it's the north south one quarter section line of section three can remember this isn't defined in the deed because we have a lot block description, so it's defined on the controlling subdivision map. And this is the north south section line of section 10, the next section to the south. Okay, and that carries us all the way down this east line here. We already did this the south line. Now we're going to move up the west line. So let's go back to our maps and take a look at what we got. Okay. So again, he doesn't call this out. Um, you, you got to do a little digging. Um, but if you dig around, he actually does call it out here. He says this is the west line of track 3, book C of maps, page 83. So this is an old, old subdivision map. So what he actually divides here is that whole track 3. Okay, and I'm actually, I've got another map that shows you track 3. I believe it's this ROS. So here he shows you, uh, the different surveyor, but he's showing you, here, here it shows you track 3, right? So this is track 3. Okay, and that's what he subdivided. He, he cut his new line right across here. Okay, so <clears throat> now we can annotate that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and put two notes here because I've got one chunk of the boundary here on one adjoiner and one chunk here on the other adjoiner. So this is the subject parcel west line of track three, or track, yeah, track three, okay? And same thing here. And the only thing we have left here is the north line now. And if you come back and look at our submap, 
Um, he doesn't, again, he doesn't directly call it out, but if you do a little detective work, you can see we've got uh, a township boundary here. And so this is the, actually the north line of section three and the township boundary. So we can call that out here. All right, guys, so we made it all the way around our subject parcel. We've identified uh, the controlling calls for uh, all of our lines. And uh, there you go. That's our first video. So what we'll do in the next video in this set is we'll, we'll start to look at these adjoiner deeds. And we'll see if the adjoiner deeds, uh, if the controlling calls for, for these lines along our exterior boundary of our subject parcel match the calls in the adjoiner deeds. That's, that's what we want to find out. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.